Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, today we'll discuss gestational diabetes mellitus. The gestational diabetes mellitus includes the glucose intolerance that develops during the course of pregnancy. That is the original gestational diabetes mellitus or the diabetes that was present prior to pregnancy but it is being diagnosed during pregnancy. We call this type of diabetes as overt or pre-existing diabetes mellitus but as it is being diagnosed during pregnancy so we keep this under the definition of gestational diabetes mellitus. So the glucose intolerance that either develops during the course of pregnancy or it is being diagnosed during pregnancy both are under same heading the gestational diabetes mellitus. So uh, the important uh, uh, aspects of gestational diabetes mellitus uh, if we consider from your examination point of view we can give you uh, a pre-pregnancy counseling station uh, station in which you can uh, you have to counsel the uh, patient uh, who is already diagnosed uh, in case of diabetes uh, and she wants to embark on pregnancy embark on pregnancy Uh, so uh, uh, one station could be like this the second station we can give you like uh, 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 if the patient uh, uh, ha has got her uh, gestation diabetes uh, mellitus test done like OGTT at 24 to 24, uh, 28 weeks of gestation and that test is deranged so, so you have to diagnose whether uh, this is gestation diabetes or not and what you are going to counsel uh, her regarding her management and the third station could be like uh, general dietary advice or from uh, management point of view as well. So pre-pregnancy counseling is very important and the aim of this pre-pregnancy counseling would be to achieve the best possible glycemic control before pregnancy because once she uh, gets pregnant uh, the organogenesis period is very important. If she is having hyperglycemia during that organogenesis time period there would be increased chances of uh, development of uh, congenital malformations so uh, uh, the prime aim is to get is to achieve the uh, best possible glycemic control uh, prior to pregnancy and we have to educate the diabetic women about the implications of pregnancy and if she is uh, already on some type of medications like ACE inhibitors that are not compatible with pregnancy or statins so we have to change those medications but if you get a, a, a station in your examination regarding pre-pregnancy counseling so here all are the all points that you have to come up, cover so uh, first of all would be glycosylated hemoglobin if the glycosylated hemoglobin is well controlled yes she can uh, get pregnant but if the glycosylated hemoglobin is uncontrolled please counsel her against pregnancy and give her some contraceptive advice that she cannot uh, embark on pregnancy with this much high glycemic uh, control uh, because there would be increased chances of development of congenital malformation uh, in her so uh, optimization of glycemic control is very important the second important thing that we have already discussed is that we have to modify her medications if she's on statins or uh, some kind of antihypertensives that are not safe in pregnancy so we have to change uh, that and in uh, diabetes we have to give high dose folic acid means 5 milligrams of folic acid right from the start of pregnancy to combat the risk of uh, congenital malformations okay we have already discussed that if the uh, glycosylated hemoglobin is uncontrolled then we have to uh, start her on adequate contraception if the patient is already diab diabetic so we have to screen for the diabetic complication in collaboration with the diabetologist and medical genet. So what are those diabetic complications? Uh, retinopathy, nephropathy or 
neuropathy or macrovascular complications as well. Because during the course of pregnancy, if you see the last two points on this slide, the deterioration of pre-existing retinopathy can occur during the course of pregnancy or the deterioration of established nephropathy can also happen during her pregnancy. So we have to screen her for the diabetic complications. She should be given information about the optimal weight gain during her pregnancy and she should be uh, counseled regarding the risks to herself and uh, the risk to her fetus uh, due to diabetes. And uh, she should also be told that uh, she would experience more nausea and vomiting. She can or she is likely to experience more nausea and vomiting in pregnancy because uh, as she is diabetic, so neuropathy uh, effect ke under gastroparesis hota hai. and uh, due to that gastroparesis, uh, uh, nausea and vomiting uh, um, vomitings are uh, uh, more likely in uh, diabetic pregnancy. So uh, we have already discussed the great importance of tight glucose control not during uh, or not in the pre-pregnancy uh, time only but during the course of pregnancy. Why? Pre-pregnancy we uh, have discussed that there is increased risk of congenital malformation. Once she become pregnant there are chances of miscarriages because hyperglycemia uh, uh, hyperglycemia ki wajah se uh, jo implantation hoti hai wo hamper ho jati hai to miscarriages ke chances increase ho jate hain uh, still births uh, polyhydramnia macrosomia preterm labor so there are many risk factors that can uh, develop if the uh, glucose control is not optimal okay uh, if she is already on insulin or if she if we have started her on insulin uh, the insulin requirements would increase with advancing gestation because of the uh, uh, pregnancy effects and the, as well as there are more chances of severe hypoglycemia as well and I want to em emphasize this point that hypoglycemia is far more dangerous as compared to hyperglycemia Hyperglycemia is also dangerous as I have already mentioned multiple risks to the fetus and mother um, apart from those uh, risk factors we also uh, can say that diabetic ketoacidosis can develop in mother uh, but hypoglycemia can uh, cause sudden death so uh, we have to manage and we have to control her sugar levels in such a way that she uh, does not develop uh, hypoglycemia but in pregnancy she is more likely to develop hypoglycemia so we have to be very vigilant and we have already discussed that retinopathy and nephropathy tends to deteriorate with the course of pregnancy so these are the points that you have to cover in the pre-pregnancy counseling OSCE station okay what are the maternal complications of type 1 and type 2 diabetes we are talking about overt uh, or pre-existing diabetes mellitus. So preeclampsia is more common. Uh, uh, three folds increase in the preeclampsia risk. So we have to start her on aspirin tablet 75 milligrams right from the end of first trimester. Diabetic retinopathy as it tends to increase and deteriorate during the course of pregnancy. So we have to uh, screen her again and again. Once we have screened her in the pre-pregnancy time, now at booking, then at 16 weeks and 28 weeks, we have to screen her again and again. Severe hypoglycemia can develop, hyperglycemia can develop, there are more chances of infections, urinary tract infections, wound infections, and due to those infections, she is prone to develop uh, preterm labor as well. And we have already discussed that diabetic ketoacidosis can also develop uh, secondary to diabetes uh, poor control. Fetal complications, if we talk about fetal macrosomia, congenital malformations, stillbirth, preterm delivery, increased risk of miscarriage, and increased operative uh, delivery rate, we have already discussed this uh, previously. 
So if we talk about management, so uh, we have to involve medical specialist or diabetologist to optimize glycemic control in the patient. Uh, so we have to uh, advise her vigorous uh, monitoring of uh, blood glucose uh, seven times uh, a day uh, before breakfast, after breakfast, before uh, uh, lunch, after lunch, before dinner and after dinner and at bedtime. So these are the seven uh, glu blood glucose levels that we will be uh, achieving uh, in this patient when once we have admitted her in our ward. So uh, if the sugar levels are uh, very deranged that uh, uh, require insulin most probably but if they are mildly deranged we can start her on oral hypoglycemic agents like metformin or glybenclamide can also be given uh, after first trimester. So she should be given dietary advice that she has to take uh, uh, food that doesn't contain sugar though she can eat one fruit per day but the fruit should not be very juicy and sugary. So uh, dietary advice we have to advise that they have to take uh, three meals and three snacks and um, they have to take small portions to avoid uh, sudden hyperglycemia as well as they have to take uh, a cup of milk before going to bed to avoid hypoglycemia during sleep. So we have to advise her on uh, uh, slight exercise, uh, like she has to do uh, a walk um, 15 minutes after every meal for 20 to 25 minutes. Okay, if we have to walk advice kar rahe, after meals, so this is going to affect her post meal levels. In pregnancy, the post meal levels are more important and we uh, control post meal levels more vigorously because uh, post meal levels, they correlate with the development of macrosomia. Though we also control pre meal levels, but post meal levels are more important. And we also have to manage the, the patient and we have to counsel her regarding hypoglycemia if she is feeling uh, because the symptoms of uh, hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia are more or less same so if she is experiencing palpitations uh, tremors and sweating so she has to uh, get her uh, blood sugar done and if it comes out to be less than 60 milligrams per deciliter she has to take some type of food a sandwich a juice uh, a toffee uh, or something like this so uh, we have to counsel her uh, for the risk of hypoglycemia as well and how to manage it so uh, 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 we have already done the renal and retinal screening and uh, the fetal surveillance is very important uh, at uh, 19 to 20 weeks of gestation we have to uh, get her fetal anomaly scan done uh, to see the uh, congenital malformations so uh, for chamber uh, cardiac view and cardiac outflow tracts uh, should be examined thoroughly during that fetal anomaly scan and apart from this scan we have to get serial growth scans four weekly or three weekly to assess fetal growth macrosomia and polyhydramnios fetal growth serial scans we are seeing and uh, abdominal circumference is the uh, pinpoint thing that we have to see in those scans and we uh, uh, have to uh, uh, look for uh, fetal macrosomia. Whenever we have to assess for fetal growth, abdominal circumference is the parameter that we have to look for. So in fetal surveillance, fetal anomaly scan and serial growth scans to look for macrosomia and polyhydramnios and we have to have a definite plan of delivery uh, because of the risk of late stillbirth uh, we have to counsel the patient that uh, we want her to deliver by 38 to 39 weeks so uh, we have to either induce the patient or depending upon her obs past obstetric history we have to get uh, her cesarean section so if uh, we are planning delivery, we have to give uh, antenatal cort corticosteroids depending upon the need. 
uh, and as we all know that uh, steroids that they lead to hyperglycemia so we have to adjust insulin dose accordingly and um, we have discussed the timing and mode of delivery already uh, there are uh, increased chances of cesarean section due to macrosomia preeclampsia failed induction of labor patients are more obese if uh, uh, diabetic patients are more obese so uh, dysfunctional labor uh, tends to settle in so there are increased chances of cesarean section and cesarean section rates are reported to be as high as 50 percent during labor the sliding scale of insulin and glucose monitoring should be commenced so uh, what is the aim of blood uh, glucose level the aim is 4 to 7 millimole uh, to reduce the risk of neonatal hypoglycemia so this is the level that we want prior to pregnancy and during labor 4 to 7 millimoles prior to pregnancy we inka itna hi hona chahiye during labor bhi itna hona chahiye taaki hum jo hai na risks ko avoid kar sake post deliveries jo hai the after delivery insulin requirement return to pre pregnancy levels so insulin doses should be adjusted and reduced accordingly women should be informed of the increased risk of hypoglycemia in the postnatal period because they are breastfeeding as well um, uh, and insulin requirements have been decreased increased risk of type 2 diabetes mellitus later in life if the patient is typically with gestational diabetes mellitus who has developed glucose intolerance during the course of pregnancy so uh, uh, there would be chances of type 2 diabetes mellitus development in later life okay up till now we have discussed about type 1 or type 2 diabetes in pregnancy uh, la, 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 it was gestational diabetes mellitus but it was pre-existing but we have diagnosed it during the course of pregnancy now what about a patient who enters the pregnancy uh, while she is normal glycemic and we screen her for uh, the diabetes mellitus because we are Asians and we are as, uh, at high risk for development of gestational diabetes mellitus so uh, I want to emphasize on this point that screening is done on healthy population. So screening can be universal screening or high, high risk groups uh, no, targeted. So uh, a screening test can be a fasting blood sugar test or oral glucose tolerance test, gestational, uh, sorry, oral glucose tolerance test, fasting uh, blood sugar or glucose challenge test that uh, has to be confirmed with uh, oral glucose uh, tolerance test so if we uh, want to screen her we can uh, have a single uh, test approach OGTT or uh, double test approach first glucose challenge test and then uh, embarking on oral glucose tolerance test so now uh, please make this point very clear that if the patient is already diabetic if her blood uh, sugar levels are already deranged say I um, uh, order a fasting blood sugar in a patient and it comes out to be 120 milligrams per deciliter so uske pehle hi, uh, blood sugar levels deranged and we do not want that we have 75 grams uh, ka, uh, glucose load de de. this is not on we are screening jo pehle diabetic nahi hai and we want to just know ke ye ab diabetic to nahi hogi theek hai to screening is then done on healthy population number 1 number 2 if if uh, in oral glucose tolerance test that we know ke usme hum ek fasting level karwate hain uske baad 1 hour karwate hain and two of, after 2 hours of 75 grams oral uh, 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 glucose load dete hain so if her fasting blood sugar is more than that, we don't give her 75 grams of load. If her fasting is normal, then she gives her 75 grams of oral load. And then we have to uh, check the sugar at one hour of that load and after two hours of that load. So if one level comes out to be deranged in this screening test, it, uh, the, we diagnose the patient as uh, with gestational diabetes. 
So uh, if we talk about whether we have to do the universal screening or high-risk group screening uh, uh, here, uh, as we are from ethnic group with high rates of type 2 diabetes, we are Asians, so we have to go for uh, universal screening. Uh, because we are already uh, forming a high-risk group uh, in relation to our uh, uh, being Asian. So maternal obesity, if the patient is obese or if there is prior history of large gestational age infant, macrosomic babies that deliver kiata, yeah, there is family history of type 1 or type 2 diabetes, or she, she is from ethnic group with high rates of gestation diabetes, mellitus type 2. So, these are risk factors in which you have to do screening high risk group ke accordingly. Karne hai. Uh, in uh, JPMC, we are uh, doing uh, high risk targeted screening, but please note that we are from the ethnic group with high rates of diabetes type 2, uh, 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 type 2 uh, because we are Asian and we have a high uh, history, family history of type 2 di diabetes. Otherwise, if we want to uh, go for high risk uh, uh, group targeted screening, if the mother is obese or she had previously delivered a baby uh, who was macrosomic or family history related or ethnic group related, these are the uh, risk factors which we have to see in this history and then we have to go for screening. Okay. So these are the two screening tests criteria. If we talk about oral glucose tolerance test. NICE criteria and WHO guidelines. As both of these are mentioned in your book, so I have to add, I had to add this in your, uh, this uh, topic. NICE criteria says that if the fasting blood sugars are more than 5.6 millimoles or two hour post 75 load is more than 7.8, if even one reading is deranged, we will label the patient as with gestation diabetes. So you have to remember 5, 6, 7, 8, 5, 6, 7, 8, fasting 5 per 6, 2 hours post load 7.8, 5, 6, 7, 8 for that. WHO guidelines, they say 5, 10 and 8.5, 5, 10 and 8.5. So for NICE criteria, you have to remember 5, 6, 7, 8 and for WHO guidelines, you have to uh, uh, memorize 5, 10 and 8.5. Fasting 5.1, 1 hour more than 10, 2 hour more than 8.5 millimoles. In this case, if we have a deranged level, then we patient ko hum diagnose kar dete hai, as with gestation diabetes mellitus. Then we have a uh, 2 weeks ka trial that we have a blood sugar monitoring, we have a diet uh, modification, we have a walk for a little bit, and we uh, have a diagnosis of blood glucose monitoring kare during uh, those 2 uh, weeks period that we have given her. अगर उसमें उसके लेवल्स नॉर्मल रहते हैं तो वी विल नॉट स्टार्ट एनी हाइपोग्लाइसेमिक एजेंट बट इफ द लेवल्स आर डिरेंज ड्यूरिंग दिस टू वीक पीरियड देन वी हैव टू स्टार्ट हर फर्स्ट ऑन ओरल हाइपोग्लाइसेमिक एजेंट एंड इफ द लेवल्स आर स्टिल अनकंट्रोल्ड देन वी हैव टू स्टार्ट हर ऑन ऐड ऐड इंसुलिन इन एडिशन टू हर ओरल हाइपोग्लाइसेमिक एजेंट ओके नाउ गोइंग ऑन द प्रीवियस स्लाइड अगेन What are the targets of uh, blood sh sugar control? जो अभी हमने बात की WHO की बात की और हमने nice criteria की बात की वो OGTT के लिए था, वो screening test के लिए था, वो diagnose करने के लिए था. आप जो हम बात कर रहे हैं वो हम कर रहे हैं कि आप पेशेंट आपने डायग्नोस कर ली अकॉर्डिंग टू आइदर नाइस क्राइटेरिया और डब्ल्यू एच ओ क्राइटेरिया आपने डायग्नोस कर ली है कि वो डायबिटीज़ है और आपने उसको टू वीक्स का टाइम दिया है कि जी आप इसमें ब्लड ग्लूकोज मॉनिटरिंग करके आएँ और वॉक करें और डाइटरी मॉडिफिकेशन करें तो उन टू वीक्स में इसका टारगेट कैपिलरी ग्लूकोज लेवल क्या होना चाहिए मैंने आपको फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट कहा था उसको थोड़ा सा मॉडिफाइड कर दें 5378 याद कर लें प्री मील उसका 95 मिलीग्राम्स होना चाहिए 5.3 होना चाहिए 
एंड वन आवर पोस्ट मील उसका सेवन पॉइंट एट होना चाहिए इसको आप ऐसे भी मॉडिफाई कर सकते हैं कि प्री मील लेस दैन हंड्रेड वन आवर वन फोर्टी एंड टू आवर वन ट्वेंटी हंड्रेड वन फोर्टी वन ट्वेंटी ठीक है ये इसके टारगेट कैपिल भी ग्लूकोज लेवल होने चाहिए ऐसे पेशेंट के जो कि ऑलरेडी डायग्नोज हो चुकी है एज विद गेस्टेशन डायबिटीज ब्लाइटिस सो वी हैव टॉक्ट ऑलरेडी अबाउट नाइस क्राइटेरिया एंड डब्ल्यू एच गाइडलाइंस दिस आल्सो शोज दैट द स्क्रीनिंग शुड बी यूनिवर्सल और हाई रिस्क टारगेटेड और इट शुड बी वन स्टेप ओनली इंक्लूडिंग सेवेंटी फाइव ग्राम्स और ग्लूकोज टॉलरेंस और Uh, first you have to go, uh, get her uh, glucose challenge test followed by ogtt so uh, i think that we should not go in this detail okay now gdm management jo maine aapko pehle hi bata diya hai ke uh, jo glucose intolerance develop ho raha hai during the course of pregnancy uski management thodi si alag hai jo type 1 aur type 2 डायबैटिक्स हैं जिनकी शुगर लेवल्स बहुत ज़्यादा आएंगी जब आप उनको मॉनिटर करेंगे तो आपको सब पता चल जाएगा कि वो प्री एग्जिस्टिंग डायबिटीज़ थे और फर्स्ट ट्रेमेस्टर से ही वो डायबैटिक चलते हुए आ रहे हैं गेस्टेशन डायबिटीज मिलाइटिस जो होगी वो रेलेटिवली ज़रा लेट डिवेलप होगी रेलेटिवली माइल्डर होगी तो इस तरह हमें पता चल जाएगा और उसको हमने खुद ही डायग्नोज किया होगा आइडर थ्रू फास्टिंग ब्लड शुगर्स और ओ और इसकी इम्प्लीकेशन और रिस्क फैक्टर्स काफ़ी कम होंगे गेस्टेशन डायबिटीज मिलाइटिस जो कि डिवेलप हुई है ड्यूरिंग द कोर्स ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी क्योंकि ऑर्गेनोजेनेसिस में द पेशेंट वॉज नॉर्मल नॉर्मल ग्लाइसमिक सो द रिस्क ऑफ कॉन्जेनियल मेलफॉर्मेशन आर लेस रिस्क ऑफ मिस कवरेज आर लेस एंड एज इट द्लूकोज इंटॉलरेंस दैट डिवेलप ड्यूरिंग द कोर्स ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी टेंस टू बी माइल्डर सो द रिस्क ऑफ डिवेलपमेंट ऑफ माइक्रोसोमिया पोलियाड्रेम न्यूज प्री टर्म लेबर Uh, all these risks are far less as compared to uh, the patients who already have uh, diabetes mellitus so in gd management we have discussed ke humne unko life uh, lifestyle modification de diye diet and exercise batani hai for two weeks and if during those two weeks uh, uh, her blood sugar levels are not uh, within range that we had discussed 5.3 and 7.8 uh, मिलीमोस तो फिर हम उनको ओरल हाइपोग्लाइसिमिक स्टार्ट करेंगे मेटफॉर्मिन या ग्लाबेन क्लमाइड एंड इफ द ब्लड शुगर लेवल्स आर स्टिल अनकंट्रोल वी कैन ऐड इंसुलिन रेजमेंट्स एंड आफ्टर द डिलीवरी ऑफ अ पेशेंट हु हैड गेसेशन डायबिटीज वी हैव टू स्क्रीन आउट टाइप टू डायबिटीज एट सिक्स टू थर्टीन वीक्स आफ्टर द बर्थ ऑफ बेबी सिक्स टू थर्टीन वीक्स पे हमने उसका एक फास्टिंग ब्लड शुगर करवाना है या ग्लाइकोसाइलेटेड हीमोग्लोबिन करवाना है क्योंकि ये पेशेंट्स दे आर मोर प्रॉन टू डिवेलप टाइप टू डायबिटीज लेटर इन लाइफ ओके वन मोर पॉइंट दैट आई वॉन्ट टू क्लियर इफ यू वॉन्ट टू कन्वर्ट मिली मोल्स इन टू मिली ग्राम्स पर डेसिलेटर यू हैव टू मल्टीप्लाई मिली मोल्स फिगर वेथ एटीन मतलब अगर 5.3 है मल्टीप्लाई इट विद 18 यू विल गेट 95 मिली ग्राम्स पर डेसिलेटर सो वेन एवर यू हैव टू चेंज मिली मोस इन मिली ग्राम्स यू हैव टू मल्टीप्लाई द नंबर विद 18 आपको दोनों लेवल्स याद होने चाहिए गैस स्टेशन डायबिटीज नाइटिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड वेरी बेसिक तो प्लीज आपको मिली मोल्स में भी याद होना चाहिए आपको मिली ग्राम्स में भी याद होना चाहिए इफ यू टॉक अबाउट योर एग्जामिनेशन सेकेंड पॉइंट आपको थोड़ा सा आइडिया uh, होना चाहिए इंसुलिन uh, रेजमेंट्स uh, के uh, बारे में इंसुलिन रेजमेंट्स हम बहुत लॉन्ग एक्टिंग इंसुलिन नहीं यूज़ करते ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी वी जस्ट यूज रेगुलर इंसुलिन एंड एन पी एच इंसुलिन क्योंकि जो लॉन्ग एक्टिंग इंसुलिन होती हैं दे कैन कॉज हाइपोग्लाइसीमिया एंड एज हाइपोग्लाइसीमिया चांसेस आर ऑलरेडी मच मोर इन प्रेगनेंसी सो वी टेंट टू अवॉइड लॉन्ग एक्टिंग इंसुलिन वेजमेंट्स डूइंग प्रेगनेंसी दूसरी बात वेरी शॉर्ट एक्टिंग भी यूज़ नहीं करते हम वेरी रैपिड भी नहीं यूज़ करते वी यूज रेगुलर इंसुलिन सो वेन वी स्टार्ट द पेशेंट ऑन इंसुलिन वी स्टार्ट हर ऑन बेजल बोलस रेजमिन 
बेजल बोलिस रेजमिन क्या है कि एन जो है वो हम या सिर्फ एक टाइम दे रहे हैं रात के टाइम या दो टाइम दे रहे हैं एट बिफोर ब्रेकफास्ट एज वेल एज बिफोर डिनर दो टाइम एन देने का दे के बेजल कंट्रोल अचीव कर रहे हैं एंड बोलस मीन्स रेगुलर आप दे रहे हैं बोलस विद ईच मील सो थ्री रेगुलर डोजेस अ डे एंड वन और टू एन पी एच डोजेस पर डे आर यूज टू कंट्रोल ब्लड शुगर लेवल्स इन पेशेंट्स विद गेशन डायबिटीज इसमें थोड़ा सा जो है कॉन्सेप्ट ये होता है कि जो रेगुलर रेगुलर इंसुलिन होती है वो कंट्रोल करती है आपकी पोस्ट मील लेवल्स और जो एन पी एच है वो प्री मील लेवल्स पर ज़्यादा इफेक्ट होता है उसका तो हमें जो है ना थोड़ा सा जब डोज मॉडिफिकेशन करते हैं हम इंसुलिन की डोज इंक्रीज या डिक्रीज करते हैं तो हमें ये एक आइडिया होना चाहिए एन पी एच इंसुलिन का पोस्ट मील पर भी इफेक्ट है बट इट हैज़ मोर इफेक्ट ऑन प्री मील लेवल्स सेकेंडली एक और फिनोमिना होता है डॉन्स फिनोमिना एंड सोमोगाइ फिनोमिना उसमें ये होता है कि जब भी आपको इंसुलिन की डोजेस एडजस्ट करनी हो तो आपको पता होना चाहिए स्पेशली अगर फास्टिंग ब्लड शुगर बहुत ज़्यादा है तो वो डॉन्स फिनोमिना के अंडर इफेक्ट भी ज़्यादा हो सकती है और वो सोमोगाय के फिनोमिना के अंडर इफेक्ट भी ज़्यादा हो सकती है डॉन्स में क्या सोमोगाय में क्या होता है कि रात में पेशेंट को हाइपोग्लाइसीमिया होता है और उस हाइपोग्लाइसीमिया की वजह से रिएक्शनरी हार्मोन्स स्टीरोड्स वगैरह रिलीज होते हैं एंड सुबह में जब हम शुगर चेक करते हैं तो वो हाइपोग्लाइसीमिया मिलती है और जो डॉन्स फिनोमिना होता है उसमें रात से हाइपर ग्लाइसीमिया चलता 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 सुबह तक आ रहा होता है तो प्लीज़ बी रिमाइंडेड कि इनकी ट्रीटमेंट डिफरेंट है इनकी अगर सोमो गाय है तो वी हैव टू रिड्यूस एन पी एच डोज ऑफ नाइट टाइम ताकि उसको रात में हाइपोग्लाइसीमी ना हो और फिर रिएक्टिव हाइपर ग्लाइसीमिया इन द मॉर्निंग ना हो और अगर डॉन्स फिनोमिना है तो वी हैव टू इंक्रीज नाइट टाइम एन पी एच सो दैट हर हाइपर ग्लाइसीमिया इज कंट्रोल्ड टू सच एन इफेक्ट के टू सच एन एक्सटेंट के उसका मॉर्निंग का लेवल भी बेहतर हो इफ यू हैव एनी क्वरीज प्लीज कॉन्टैक्ट मी ऑन माई व्हाट्सएप जीरो डबल थ्री वन टू वन सिक्स नाइन टू सेवन वन थैंक यू